Hello, sports fans. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Jason Aaron Goldberg, and this is Card Collecting Shenanigans. While you're here, hope you'll subscribe. It's Throwback Thursday, and you know what that means. Old oh, stuff. Today, the Wayback Machine takes us back to the late 80s to look at the card that ESPN recently dubbed the funniest baseball card ever made. But as you can see, the tarp is off the field, so you know we gonna also rip some old stuff, namely a little 1984 Topps Rack Pack featuring this Andre Dawson All-Star card that I picked up this Rack Pack so I could send that to Like a Hawk Cards, because that's his man, Hawk. Uh, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to start with the 89 card, uh, the funniest card ever made. Uh, going to look at the set. Uh, talk a little bit about Keith Comstock, and then also going to go and look at the 1988 set, which is actually a better set overall. But first up, uh, here it is. The 1989 Pro Cards Keith Comstock Ball to the Groin card. Now, I was cracking up when I saw this pop up in my newsfeed yesterday. I can't believe it was only yesterday because... On August 19th, this card sold on eBay for $5.99. The next day after the article dropped, it started selling for $20, and then it started rising, and then it sold for $150, and somebody out there paid $250 for it. It is still kind of rising and gaining steam, but this is where the hobby gets crazy sometimes because I think after the, the hubbub dies down, it's going to drop back down to $5. I don't know how rare it is, but growing up in Vegas as a kid, the Las Vegas stars were all we had. So we used to go to games all the time. Uh, and so being that that was the only team in town, we of course got team sets. So I knew I had this in the collection when I saw this pop up. We might actually have two of them. Uh, so Keith Comstock... Played uh, parts of six seasons in the show uh, with the Twins, Giants, Padres, and Mariners. Uh, that means that making his way to the show for at least one day, he gets lifetime health care. Smokey's Baseball Cards was the baseball card shop in Las Vegas in this era. When the, the junk era was exploding, he had one store, and then he had two, and then he had three, and then he started his own baseball card set of hockey cards, and then it all just imploded, and I don't know what happened to Smokey. But uh, it was a great shop. You spent a lot of time there as a kid. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this card and the story, because I'm just going to direct you to the description below where I have a link to the ESPN article. I encourage you to go check it out. It's a fun one. The, the short of the story is he had been planning to do something like this for many years and kind of got shut down by the teams or whatever. And then in this sort of nearing the end of his career, he just did it. He got the okay and wasn't sure if it was actually going to be the card. And it wound up being the card. So he got it. And it became legendary. Also, as you can see, we got a couple of his big league cards back here. Uh, just a fine mustachioed man right there. Proud owner of a Caterpillar. So let's take a look at this set. In the article, he talks about the team. And he's a little off because he talks about uh, Bruce Bochy being on the team and uh, Roberto Alomar. But I don't think Roberto's on the club in 89. I think he's already up in the show. But his brother Sandy is still with the club. I think he probably got called up this, like, later this year, if I recall, because his rookie cards were, like, 89. Uh, but, man, I loved... This was such a classic. It's, like, a brown and pinstripe with orange. Just a great, great look. I wish they went back to that, because now... So this is when they were a Padres affiliate, and now they are the Oakland A's affiliate, and they're called the Aviators. I actually misspoke yesterday, uh, and I said 50 once, because for a while there... They were the 51s, which was just really dumb. Uh, it was like an alien was their mascot, and it was just terrible. So I'm glad they're the Aviators now, even though I don't think that's a great name either. I've got a new ballpark and everything. Beautiful stuff. Joey Cora, that's Alex's big brother. Just another longtime famous baseball family. Also from Puerto Rico. Shout out to Victor. Sean Abner played on Team USA and was a really highly touted prospect. Had a few cups of coffee in the show, but never really panned out uh, to be too much. We'll kind of go through these a little more quickly because you might recognize a few names, but for the most part, not really. Gerald Clark, he played in the big leagues too. 
And in the article, uh, Keith Comstock talks about they just lined up and he, the photographer just racked off, you know, shots. Just click, 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 and then they were done. Randall Byers also played in the show. Thomas Howard, another big heavy hit and prospect, uh, came up and uh, didn't again didn't really have a great career, but he played a little bit in the, in the big leagues. Now Carlos Baerga, there you go. There's another great player. Uh, we were a little spoiled when I was a kid with all these great players. Baerga, very long career, great player. Also Puerto Rico, very cool. Let's see what else we got here. Just a fun, just, you know, not a very high cost set. I don't know if Smokey's actually paid for these or not, because uh, it's pro cards, but I didn't even notice that Smokey's was on there until just now, looking at the cards. I did post a, f a few pics of the card itself, the Keith Comstock card, on the Facebook page. Uh, and so this I'd sort of been leading up to this because once I saw the article pop, I was just laughing and it was like all I could think about. So it feels like it was like five days ago, but I can't believe it was only one day ago that that article dropped on ESPN. And now it's just all the rage. It's like the Billy Ripken card. Like, is it better? Uh, so I, I turn to you, my fab subs out there. Do you think this is the funniest card ever made? Or can you leave a comment with a funnier card? Uh, so here's the year before. Now, this set was actually a better set. Not quality, I just mean better players. Uh, we'll go through it. I'll mention there's two cards in here that are not in this, in this set because they're in the vault. There you go. You can sort of see he was drafted in 76. And just, I mean, a true journeyman. Uh, but now he is the, uh, the Rangers rehab pitching coach. So he's still, you know, working in baseball, which is great. I mean, that's kind of what you want when you're a player, you want to be able to have your career when the playing days are over and stay in baseball. Uh, just a great life, I would imagine, if your family can put up with it. He mentions in the article how many times he was released and traded, and his wife was just a super supportive woman who helped him out uh, and stuck with him through all of that. So I, start, I wanted to start with this one because you hear me mention Bip Roberts periodically. He was my favorite player for the Stars because he's a little guy. You always hear me say, you got to root for the little guys. Uh, still planning to do an OT retro. I would like to see if I can get him to TTM, uh, and then it would be cool. But I do have other Bip Roberts autographs from this era. Now, interestingly about this set, if you can see right here, it's like the negative carries over, and it's on many cards. That like really terrible, poorly printed negative carryover. There's Randall Byers again. But there is a future Hall of Famer coming up. Gerald Clark's a sale. And, you know, it was really interesting because as a kid growing up, there was a lot, you know, it felt like these guys were playing in Las Vegas for 10 years, but they were really only there for like two years. But when you're a kid, your concept of time is really narrow. And so everything feels like forever. That's why when you're in school, it feels like it takes 50 hours to get through a day. And when you're an adult, you hit the you hit five o'clock hour, right? If you have a regular nine to five job and you're like, wow, it's like not enough hours in the day. So the older you get, the faster it goes. Gary Green back there, he played, uh, he had a little bit of time in the big leagues. There's Thomas Howard again. We're coming up on the future Hall of Famer. There he is. Look at that, people. About to retire. Lock for the Hall of Fame as a manager three-time World Series champ with the Giants, Bruce Bochy, when he was a coach and catcher, the backup catcher. And there's that carryover of the negative. Look at that. It originally signed in 75. It's even got <laughs> career stats there. I hope that's not just the minor leagues, but uh, I want to say Bruce Bochy did have more time in the big leagues, but um, I totally forgot that he had this card in this set that you know so at this point he's like mid 30s at least if not older like nearing late 30s and still tooling around as a player brad pounders was another guy that was your like heavy hitting first baseman brad pounders <laughs> how many home runs he got he had 27 homers in wichita 
35 the year before in Reno. <laughs> I mean, and yet stuck in the minors. <laughs> I think he probably did have a little bit of time in the big leagues, but not too much. Let's take a quick look at uh, these two. I looked for more, uh, and I couldn't find them, but... He has a 1991 Topps card. That's the 40th anniversary of Topps. It's actually a really pretty set with some really, really great photography. A lot of landscapes, and his card is a landscape. And there's an error. Uh, it's a beautiful card. He's with the Mariners, but there's an error out there that lists it with the Cubs. So if you've got deep in your reservoir of cards from the junk era some 91 Topps, Dig in there and see if you can find it. I looked. I couldn't find even the regular, but I'm going to go back through the vault and see if I can find any more of that 91 tops and see if I, I can pull that card out and show it off. Probably not the air, but if you can find the air, it's pretty cool. Look at that. Long career tooling around the, the, the big leagues, the minor leagues. But lifetime healthcare probably got his pension. Uh... We were talking a lot at the national because we were invest. You know, we were just talking about baseball, and I, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show before, but you have the whole world in your pocket now on your phone. So like, there's no debating anymore. You got a question, you just pull your phone out. All right, what's the answer? And we were trying to figure out like, how long do you have to be in the big leagues to get health care, and how long till your pension and all that? And we were shocked because you only need one day in the big leagues to have lifetime health care, and you only need. 43 days in the big leagues to hit your pension and that starts at like 38,000 a year if you can reach 10 years in the big leagues your pension does jump over a hundred thousand dollars and it kind of just grows and grows from there but uh you know if you're a young kid out there playing and you're thinking oh will I get to the big leagues and can I do it just think about that one day one day getting called up lifetime health care and pretty good health care uh and then if you can make it 43 days just 43 days Think of Crash Davis and that great scene in Bull Durham where he says, yeah, I've been to the show. I was in the show 18 days once, so Crash doesn't get a pension. I do not know if you get it in the minor leagues as well, but I'm going to guess no. All right, let's get to a little rippage. I've been planning to rip these. I have two of these 84 rack packs uh, and was planning to rip both of them, but then this card happened, and I thought, all right, let's just rip one. Have a little fun, a little rippage. Oh, of course. Got the Lucky Cup on standby. Where's Donnie Baseball? Because that is who we're chasing. There he is. All right, Lucky Cup. Let's see if you can deliver a Don Mattingly rookie card. We've ripped a little bit of this 84 and haven't pulled one yet. My guess is probably not, but uh, you never know because I haven't really seen rhyme or reason in terms of coalition. You see a little repeat, but I still... I don't know how, if you're a seller, you could really know rack pack to rack pack today. Like, maybe back then if you're paying attention, but now, I, I really, I don't know. All right, let's get a good look at these, baby. A little fun, vintage, old stuff. Nice Andre Dawson, who's with the Expos. Oh, that's too bad. When I saw this online, this is uh, from the same seller who I've picked up uh some 82s and stuff like that and he had now he's kind of switched to a late mid later 80s sort of stuff and saw this month oh i'm gonna grab that rack pack and send that over to like a hawk too bad it's a little bit damaged oh look at that that's a mini kaboom second year ryan sandberg Let's see if it's in better condition it is a little off cut but pretty good quality overall not the greatest print on the card itself, but not too bad. That gives me a little hope here that we might get something cool. Nice Larry Boa. Oh, yeah, Pete Vukovic. Oh, man. A little first pack fire going. Steve Howe, pre cocaine. Steve Howe came over to the Yankees in the 90s and just exploded his career because he couldn't stay away from the nose candy. Let's take a look at these. Wow, that's some really solid ripping right there. Same rack pack. How about that business? I'm digging that the most. 
Not too bad. On, I mean, again, corner super sharp. Not that well centered, but definitely could be worse. Let's see what else we got here. Whoa, that's a quality mustache right there. Look at all these mustaches. Wow, Pat Zachary. Come on, Lucky Cup. Let's deliver another quality card. Leon Bull Durham. That's a pretty Cubbies heavy uh, pack here. All right, last one. Can you deliver the Magic Lucky Cup? Or maybe, I mean, you already did, kind of. Ripken and Sandberg? That's that's hot. Oh, but you keep it coming. It's not a hit, but since we just looked at his minor league car, there we go, Bruce Bochy. Let's take a look at the back. I love this logo of the Friar. I mean, look at that, coming up with the Astros. Quality. Nice, a little Ricky Henderson action. Gosh, I'm a little mad I didn't rip the other one, but maybe I should have saved it. And Mike Schmidt. Wow, this thing actually looks really, really good. We'll take a look at the back, but wow, it looks super centered. Corners super sharp. It doesn't look as good on the back. But the front here, I mean, we'll take another look at it here in a second. Come on, baby. Drop that Mattingly on me. Oh, another one. Hawk to the rescue. All right. We didn't hit the Mattingly, but wow, that actually was a really solid rack pack. That's why it's fun to rip the old stuff when you get one like that. Let's take a quick look at all three of these. Because, again, quality-looking centering. Corner's really sharp. Yeah, that one looks nice nice and centered on the back. And both of these just look stellar. That is some really, really quality looking vintage. Man, I can't believe it. Ripken, Sandberg, two Dawsons, Mike Schmidt, Ricky Henderson, and a Bruce Bochy also rocking the crumb duster. Beautiful push broom on Bruce Bochy right there. That is some sweetness. Well, leave a comment, everybody, and let me know what you thought of today's Throwback Thursday. I had a really good time. Looking forward to your comments. Slam that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to all your friends, and I'll see you next time in the broadcast booth.